I'm going to devote a few of these, I guess, to the Jobs uh, biography. Uh, reading through and looking at the attributes of self-actualization, um, I'm pretty sure he was there. And he was who he was, there was very little doubt, uh, did what he wanted to do to get where he wanted to. Uh, he was two years younger than me, born near the goat, I'm born near the snake. So the year the horse is in between, just in case those people don't know Chinese astrology. But when I read through his life, a lot of it, uh, many of us were doing what he was doing uh, in his young years through the 70s and 80s. Uh, many of us were doing uh, drugs to open awarenesses in different areas to see how... Uh, what what we're capable of, and many of us looked around at different religion, different ways of being, uh, Buddhism, meditation, uh, all of those things, uh, and that's what kept me on a search to do what I do. Uh, I've talked about this before, but being a child of the 70s was a time when we were actively searching for enlightenment, actually searching for... Um, a bunch of things, and a lot of us were, every every time you turned, uh, it was a cult. If, no matter what I decided to look at that was outside the norm, somebody, ooh, that's a cult, ooh, that's a cult. And that usually meant that I was going to go look at it a little more closely. Uh, I did some studies with Scientology. I don't know whether they're a cult or not. Uh, they never gave me any problems when it came to me getting out of Scientology, but I've heard a lot of other people have had problems trying to get out of there. Uh, I found it very valuable. I don't think I'll ever work with them again because I don't uh, trust their methods. But everything you went to look at was considered a cult. And about 26, 27 years ago, I ran into a man and we sat and we had a conversation and my mind was going absolutely crazy. Uh, he was asking me questions, laughing at me, laughing with me. Uh, and I was thinking, oh, this is the Antichrist, everything I'd read. Uh, but on the Monday afterwards, the impact of his work was so astounding. I was out in a different reality. I was out in a reality that I knew was possible, that I was only capable of experiencing uh, with chemical additives. And that's when I said to him, I need to study with you. I want to study with you. He really tried to talk me out of it. But I spent a lot of time with him. When I listen to my clients, a lot of them say... They tell me their truth. My truth is my highest spiritual moments are when I work. When I see the human spirit come alive and I see it, how delightful it is and how fun it is and how covered over sometimes it is by enculturated madness, the, the learned world, the emotional world that's absolutely learned. And that's one of the things I look with Steve Jobs. It seems that the emotions, he, that he didn't have an aspect of self-actualization because his emotions were kind of out of control. And I'm not saying there's any reason to control them. What I'm saying is that to acknowledge them and move on. And maybe, maybe a lot of his crying and temper tantrums were just to cajole people, just to get them to move where he knew they were capable of moving. But I do my work because what I was looking for, I found. Right? And a lot of people, I think, are still looking. I don't know. But if you're looking for a direct experience of self-actualization to find you, I have a way to help you there. Help you. No, you're beyond help. I have a method where we can sit and look, and it doesn't work for everybody. But it works for a lot of people. If you're curious and desperate, check out my website. Check out my book, www.micpeakperformance.com. Have a fun day, because I think that's what life is all about.